Hello, and welcome to Leafy Greens vs. Zombies. This is a challenge I am taking on inspired by many recent videos like Shagrat's Nuts Only Challenge. I'm going to get right into things, so let's start going over the ground rules. Number one is the heart and soul of this challenge, and it's that I'm only allowed to use leafy green plants. Leafy green plants are edible plants where the main edible part of the plant is the leaves, so I will only be allowed to use plants like cabbage pulp, iceberg lettuce, and bong choy. I must play levels in order, all the way from ancient Egypt until modern day. I can't skip ahead and get plants from later worlds and then come back to levels. I may try impossible levels later, but they will still be considered impossible if I couldn't get them without skipping ahead. I'm not allowed to use power-ups or buy plant food. These will make things way too easy. No leveling up plants. Leveling up plants would make things way too easy. I can skip conveyor belt levels and levels where some or all plants are pre-picked, but I will usually give them a shot. I don't interact with pre-planted plants. I won't shovel them, use plant food on them, or if there is a plant such as a coconut cannon or a banana launcher, I will not use them. I have the authority to skip parts of tutorial levels and other special levels, like the plant food tutorial or the coconut cannon level in Piracy. I'm allowed to use the Zen garden in extreme circumstances. I will try to avoid it to my greatest effort, but it may be impossible to avoid at some point. Gmiums are allowed, but I have to grind for them. Fortunately, my only Gmium is Herc. Lastly, I may have to present some new rules at some point due to unforeseen events, so I will be implementing rules mid-game if I run into something. Before we start, I'd like to ask that you show some support for my video. This is my largest production I've ever made, and I will be putting a lot of effort into it. Your support is very appreciated. Now let's get into things. To start off, the first few levels of the game are impossible because we don't unlock Cabbage Bolt until day 4. Day 5 is our first possible level. It starts off with some pre-planted plants, and we start planting cabbage bolts, and it's very easy. We end the level with a full field of cabbage bolts, and with very few problems. Next is the plant food tutorial level, so we're going to skip through the plant food tutorial and move to the actual level. This level is very easy, as most early levels are, but it's a good time for me to emphasize how powerful the cabbage plant food is as an area control device. I can use the cabbage pulse plant food to easily clear out a huge field of many zombies in just a matter of seconds. Next up is the power-ups tutorial level. I wanted to give it my best shot without using any power-ups of course, as the level should be possible without it. This level did give me some trouble because it's expecting you to be using these very strong power-ups, and I actually lost a lawnmower in the end, but we did come out victorious. I probably could do a bit better and not lose any lawnmowers if I tried playing again, but the goal of the challenge is just to see if we can beat the game with only leafy green plants, so I'm okay losing a lawnmower even just on an early level. Day 3 introduces us to buying plant food. Of course I have to buy one just to be able to beat the level. So we're going to skip the tutorial on how to buy plant food, of course, and then we're going to complete the rest of the level legitimately. This level gave me no problems. It was pretty easy. It gave us lots of plant food and plenty of sun because of the two pre-planted sunflowers. And winning the level gives us our next plant, which is Bloomerang. Unfortunately, we can't use it as it's not a leafy green. It's a flower. So we're going to have to wait until we unlock a different plant. Day 4 is our first conveyor belt level, and I am allowed to skip it, but as I said, I like to give it a shot without skipping it. And despite my best efforts, it appears the level only wants to give us bloomerings and walnuts. So I spent the whole level searching for a cabbage bolt and didn't ever get a single one. So I technically won without using any non-leafy green plants, but uh, I only won because the lawnmowers respawned and so I took the win. And then I am forced to upgrade a pea shooter to level two, but fortunately pea shooter isn't one of the plants that I'm allowed to use. And then I moved on to day five. Day five is among one of the easier levels of ancient Egypt, but it is significant because this is the level where we unlock our next plant, iceberg lettuce. Iceberg lettuce is really useful as a stalling plant as we don't have access to plants like walnut. Its plant food is also very significant because it can freeze the whole screen, which might end up being very important in later worlds 
levels. Day six is our first gargantuar level. This is a conveyor belt level, which means I am allowed to skip it. But as the level gives me cabbage pulps and iceberg lettuces, I decided to try my best at beating it. I gave it my best shot, and I actually managed to beat the entire level without losing a single lawnmower. It was fairly difficult, and I had to stall out the gargantuar at the end for a little while, but in the end I managed to beat it. Day seven is our first day to pick out our own plants. It doesn't really matter because we can only choose two plants anyways. Day seven was a breeze and now we move on to day eight. Day eight gives us a few pre-planted plants and this is the level that kind of introduces you to using iceberg lettuce against torchlight zombies. This is pretty vital for us, you'll see why later. The level itself wasn't too awfully hard so I'll kind of skip through it and we'll move on to day nine. Day nine is pretty insignificant, it's the day we unlock Grave Buster, which we can't use anyways. It didn't give me any troubles during the level so we'll move on to day ten. Day 10 has nothing interesting, it's not very hard, so we're skipping straight through it on to day 11. Day 11 was a pre-picked plants level. We didn't have any leafy greens, no iceberg lettuce, no cabbage bolts, no bonk choys. Um, so I went ahead and tried honoring Shagra and doing nuts only. Unfortunately that didn't really work out, lost all my lawnmowers too quickly. And so I went ahead and switched to flowers only, that also didn't work because I switched halfway through. So then I restarted the level and did pea shooters only and we passed the level just fine. And now we will move on to day 12. Day 12 was a pretty uneventful day, um, but I would like to take this time now while we're just fast forwarding through the level to remind you if you've been enjoying the video so far, a uh, like and subscribe would be very appreciated. So we'll go ahead and move on to day 13 now. Day 13 is a mold colony level. Uh, it wasn't too hard, but in the middle of it, I kind of got distracted by how the mold colonies react when you have a plant hovering over them. And so I actually almost ended up messing up in the middle lane earlier on in the level. But overall, day 13 was pretty easy. And today is the day we unlock our third usable plant. We unlock Bonk Choi which is a very fun and vital plant, and you'll see how useful that is coming up here in later levels. So here in this first level with Bonk Choi, I'm really just kind of finding my ground and finding out how I want to set up my levels from here on out because we don't unlock more leafy green plants for quite a while. So I kind of have to find a comfortable strategy for me to use on most levels. And so I have found so far that actually using Bong Choi earlier in the level is good because it stalls the zombies taking any damage until they get close enough, which means the next wave doesn't start coming as quickly, which means I get to save up more sun. And saving sun is very important in this challenge because of no sun producing plants as far as I'm aware of that are leafy greens, unless maybe we count gold leaf, but we'll have to figure out what we consider gold leaf as later. Now here on level 15, we have a protect the endangered plants level. Uh, this one's obviously going to be pretty easy because we have three sunflowers and normally we don't have any to work with. We do have to work with quite a few pharaoh zombies, which can be difficult, but with our newly acquired bonk choys, they aren't too bad, especially when we have three sunflowers. Now, usually I would fast forward through the level at 10 times speed, but I think it's important once in a while for me to show a level that is at normal speed so you guys can kind of get an idea of how this level goes for me. So I'm kind of going to talk about the future of this challenge as we go along. Some of the remaining plants for me to unlock are plants like Chard Guard and Hurricane. Chard Guard is going to be kind of important as it's going to be our wall plant at some point, and Hurricane is going to be another good stalling plant. Chard Guard, of course, comes from Frostbite Caves, and then Hurricane is a Gemium plant, so we'll have to collect 100 gems for that. A couple other options that we have are going to be Tangle Kelp, I would consider to be a leafy green. Of course that's only going to be useful in Big Wave Beach. And then we also have Head Butter Lettuce and Rhubarbarian, but both of those are sediums and they're going to take a lot of grinding for me to get. But Head Butter Lettuce and Rhubarbarian cost 250 seed packets each. Now moving on to day 16. This level wasn't too awfully hard. I did my typical strategy starting off with bong choy and then following up with a few cabbage bolts in the back. Iceberg lettuce comes in handy here and there. I had some pretty close calls with torchlight zombies. Overall the level was not too bad and now we'll move on to the next day. 
Day 17 faces us with the challenge of never having more than 14 plants. Fortunately, this isn't much of a challenge for us because I never end up having that many plants. Not having sunflowers really cuts down on the number of plants that you have in a level. We get through the level pretty easily and move on to day 18. Day 18 is our first last stand. It turns out to be pretty easy. I go with a pretty standard setup of a couple rows of bong choys and some cabbage bolts. The end of a level is a bit of a nail biter. We almost get by, but we end up losing one lawn mower. Day 19 is another challenge level. We can't have more than 16 plants, and we can't plant on Dave's mold colonies. Fortunately for us, this is pretty much just the same as the other mold colony level, because we probably won't end up having more than 16 plants anyways. This is the level where we unlock repeater, but that's not very helpful to us. The level ends up not being too hard, and we finish the level pretty easily. Day 20 is another protect the endangered plants level, and our endangered plants are sunflowers, so as you can expect, the level was very easy. Day 21 pre-picks half of my plants, so I'm technically allowed to skip it, but considering that I can only use the other half of the plants anyways, I decided to go ahead and give it a shot. The level gave me almost no trouble at all, and this is the level where we unlock extra starting sun. Day 22 is yet another challenge level with mold colonies and never have more than 18 plants. So of course naturally the plant restriction doesn't mean anything and the mold colonies are less than usual. So this level should be pretty easy. Or at least that's what I thought. This level ended up being one of the most difficult of this challenge so far and I lost three long moves. And what do I get for beating this difficult level? Just one bag of coins. In any case we now move on to day 23. Next up is another gargantuan level. In this level I go for my typical setup for the most part. Things go pretty well up until the end. I do manage to actually kill the gargantuan, but unfortunately I was not able to attend to the bottom lane where there were two bucket heads, and I do end up losing one lawn mower to this level. Day 24 is another last stand level. It's pretty standard. I go for my two rows of bong choys and two rows of cabbage pulp strategy again, but this time it actually gives us iceberg lettuce to use on the map. Unfortunately we can't use it at the beginning, but I do have a special place for it to use plant food on it, and things go okay up until the very end where it's a nail biter. We barely get by, don't lose any lawn mowers, but we make it and we unlock twin sunflower, which doesn't help us. But now we move on to day 25. Day 25 is the moment we've all been waiting for. It's the battle against Dr. Zombies. Now one thing that I wasn't sure of was whether it's going to give us enough leafy plants in order to beat Dr. Zombos, but I was determined to see if I could try my best, even though it's a conveyor belt level. And so I quickly find that on the first playthrough, I get pretty close. It still gives us boomerangs and repeaters and grave busters and walnuts, but I come up with a strategy that makes it possible for sure in order to beat Dr. Zombos. But it's not going to be super easy. I ended up spending about half an hour on just this level, trying to optimize my play strategy and get the right plants and enough plant food in order to kill Dr. Zombos. And enough luck with the RNG on how Dr. Zombos attacks, but I am going to go ahead and play through the entire final attempt of me trying to defeat Dr. Zombos.
So there you have it. That is Beefy Greens vs. Zombies, Ancient Egypt, all done. There were no impossible levels according to my rules of the channel. Although we did have some pretty tough ones where I lost some lawnmower, I really had a lot of fun doing this, and I can't wait to come back for piracies. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to like and subscribe, and turn on that notification bell so you can be notified when the piracies video comes out, and the following videos. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.